students. Today we're going to combine all of the conversion factors we've learned about the mole and we're going to use them to tackle problems that are either going to be one step or two step. So I want to introduce you to, this is called the mole map. So the mole is the center of everything. We know how many particles are in a mole, we can find how many grams are in a mole, and at STP we can figure out how many liters are in a mole and vice versa. So our problems today might be going from particles to liters or from just a simple mole to grams problem, but we're going to use this map to help us solve each problem in addition to the three conversion factors that we have. I do need to remind you that particles is just another term for the words atoms, formula, units, and molecules. So all three of these stand for particles. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So number one, how many liters are in 64 grams of oxygen? So I'm going to write my little map. I'm just going to abbreviate P M L G. So in addition to figuring out where you're starting, like we normally do, what your known is and your unknown, we're also going to identify that here on our map. So our known, we have 64 grams of oxygen, so we're here. Our unknown is liters. Now notice, there is nothing that directly connects the two. So the only way to go from grams to liters with our map is to go to mole first, and then we're going to go to liters. And we're going to use these conversion factors to do that. All right, so starting out, we're going to go ahead like we normally would and write 64 grams of oxygen. So remember, oxygen is part of Brinkelhoff. It's diatomic, so we have to put an O2. All right, and my arrows are showing this is going to be a two-step problem. So I'm going to set up like a two-step problem to give myself plenty of space. Here's some tricks. So this whole thing is about oxygen. Right now we've got grams of oxygen, and the only way we can go to liters is to go to mole, is what that M stands for of oxygen first. And then we can go from mole of oxygen to liters. So one thing that always helps is just writing your substance and drawing your map. And then we just follow the same things we've known before, where whatever I'm starting with, grams of O2, I need to get rid of that. So that has to be on the bottom. All right, my arrow points to what goes on top. So where your arrow is pointing lets you know what should be on top of your step. So I need to have mole of O2 on top. That's just one trick. If you look at your conversion factors, they also tell you that same information. So the only one that involves grams, it's got grams of the substance and then one mole of it is the other part. All right. So we're going to go ahead. Remember this one conversion factor, mole and molar mass, so going between mole and mass of one mole, is the one that is going to be very specific to our substance. So we have O2. So we have two oxygens, and if you look up the mass of oxygen on your periodic table, mine is showing 16, so there are 32 grams of O2 in one mole of O2. So I'm going to put in my 32 right here. Alright, now my grams of oxygen are going to cancel, All right, but I'm not done yet. My problem wants liters. All right, so we are now going to leave mole of O2 and go to liters of O2 using this conversion factor. So mole of O2 needs to go on the bottom so that it cancels. And the number beside mole is 1. So 1 mole of oxygen contains, we're going to liters, so we're going to use 22.4 liters of O2. Cancel, cancel. All right, our problem, the answer is going to be in liters of oxygen. What we're going to do is multiply all these top numbers like we normally would and then divide 
by the bottom numbers multiplied. So this is going to be 64 times 1 times 22.4. All right, and here's the number I'm getting for that. Then I'm going to divide it by all the numbers on the bottom multiplied. So 32 times 1 is just 32. All right? So my answer is 44.8. We don't just write the number, we write O2, so liters of O2. All right, we're going to go to the next problem. Number two, determine the mole in 1.62 times 10 to the 20th atoms of aluminum. All right, so here is our known our unknown is mole and we have this is atoms of aluminum just want to show you how you can use this map for any type of mole problem so this whole thing is about aluminum and aluminum is just al all right our known we're given atoms of aluminum that's particles is what we're given, right? We want mole, which is here. So it's only going to take us one step to get there. So we're going to start by writing our known. All right we are going to leave atoms of aluminum, so that needs to be on the bottom. We are going to mole of aluminum, so that needs to go on the top. All right, and we're going to use this first conversion factor. So one mole of aluminum is going to be equal to this number of aluminum atoms. So one mole is going to be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. All right, atoms of aluminum is going to cancel and we are going to take the top, multiply it and divide it by the bottom. So this will be 1.62 times 10 raised to the 20th. Remember these numbers need to be kept in parentheses and we're going to divide that by 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd power when I do that, I'm getting a very small number. How do I know that? Well, the E I recognize as times 10 to the, now my exponent is a negative 4. And that's okay. We can still write it this way. And we're going to do a little rounding here. So I would write this as 2 point, let's round that 6 to a 7, times 10. And then this is the negative 4 as an exponent. And this is going to be mole of aluminum. Alright, next problem. Calculate the number of molecules. So, alright, we eventually want molecules in 63 liters of carbon dioxide. So here's what we want. It's our unknown. Here's where we are starting. It's our known. All right, we can use our little map, our little trick. And this whole thing is about carbon dioxide. We are given, our known is liters of it. Our unknown is molecules. Well, molecules isn't mole, it's not grams. Molecules is another name for that particles. All right. So this is going to be a one, two-step problem. So we're going to start by writing 63 liters of carbon dioxide up top. I know it's going to take me one, two steps, so I'm going to set up for one, two. All right, on the bottom, I am going to mole of CO2. So I need to get rid of the liters of CO2 by placing that on the bottom. 
right? And this conversion factor helps me do that. One mole of any gas is equal to 22.4 liters under these conditions, which we are. So 22.4 liters of carbon dioxide on the bottom. Up top, one mole of CO2. So that way my liters of CO2 cancel, but I'm not done. We still have one more step. We need to go to the number of molecules. So that means we're gonna have to use this big number as our conversion factor. All right, so we ultimately want molecules of CO2. So we need to get rid of this mole of CO2. Notice how cancel, cancel. All right, one mole of carbon dioxide is gonna be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of carbon dioxide. All right, for solving it, we do the same thing as we normally done. We're gonna multiply 63 times one times 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd. All right, and we're gonna divide it by 22.4. And I'm getting as my answer, one point went around that to seven times 10, 24 is our exponent. Molecules of CO2. All right, one last problem. And then you're going to try some on your own. What is the mass in grams of 0 0.75 mole of aluminum oxide? So here's our known. Here's our unknown. I'm going to use my map. This does come in handy quite a bit. All right, and this whole thing is about aluminum oxide. So after you have crisscrossed the charges of this compound, it's Al2O3 for this ionic compound. All right, our known is mole. So mole is the center part. So the big M stands for mole. And we want grams of it. All right, well, that's just one Step. We have this bridge that we can walk right across to go from mole to grams. All right, so we are starting with 0 0.75 mole of aluminum oxide. All right, we need to get rid of mole of aluminum oxide. So we're gonna put that on the bottom and one mole of aluminum oxide is gonna be equal to a certain number of grams of aluminum oxide. So we're gonna to have to use this middle conversion factor. One mole equals molar mass in grams. So this is the one we're gonna to have to find. All right, so the molar mass of aluminum oxide, it has two aluminums and three oxygens. So two times aluminum's molar mass is 26.98 plus three times oxygens is 16. All right, and let's see what we get there. Two times 26.98 plus three times 16. I'm getting 101.96 grams per mole of aluminum oxide. Okay, and that's the number that we're going to place here. 101.96. Right, my mole of aluminum oxide cancels. Multiply the top, and our bottom number is just one. So I'm going to take our answer from above, times it by 0.75 and I am getting 76.47 grams of aluminum oxide. Okay, use this map and you can use them, you can go back on any of the mole problems we've done with mole and particles, 
mole and mass and mole and volume and you can use this same map. It just really comes in handy when you have to do problems that can be two steps like hour number one and three from this practice. But again you can use it on any of the problems we've done so far. The only type of problem you can't use it on is finding molar mass and that's just a simple problem where you add up the masses of all your individual atoms. If you have any questions or concerns, remember to please email or message me.